All right, I'm going to tell you guys the stories of a guy named Oedipus. Um, it was originally written by a guy named Sophocles. Um, it's been redone a couple other times with a few kind of alternate endings and twists, but um, that's the version I think we're going to roll with. Um, so to start it off, there's a wandering Phoenician prince. Remember, the Phoenicians are one of the uh, earliest people of uh, Mesopotamia, and they like to travel. So now here they are in Greece, and a guy named Prince Cadmus, um, through a, my a myth of his own, founds the city of Thebes. He ends up falling with a cow, slays a dragon. Yeah, you're starting to realize how weird Greek mythology is, but that's how he does it, and he founds the city of Thebes. So if Thebes is important, remember Thebes. Um, so Cadmus' family rules as king for a while until one day the Oracle of Delphi tells a new king, King Laius, that one day he will die at the hands of his own son. So the same way that Kronos was told he would die at the hands of his own son, Laius is told the same thing, um, but he has a plan because apparently he's smarter than Kronos who ate his kids. He does it simply. He says, oh, that's fine. I'll just never have sex with my beautiful wife, Queen Jocasta. Okay? So if I, you know, I'll just lock her up. That's like a chastity belt. Um, lock her up, then I can't have sex with her. He doesn't actually lock her up, but it's just a joke. Um, but one night, Elias gets a little too drunk. And with a beautiful wife, he just can't resist any longer. So he has sex with her. And as sometimes happens in an ancient world without condoms... A baby is born. Oh, so cute. But Laius still has a plan. Okay, so what he does, Laius, he tells a shepherd. says, take this child, put a pin through his feet, and send him into the wilderness, and we'll just let him die, and I don't have to worry about this prophecy anymore. Okay, so pin, the same way that um, Jesus had his feet pinned to the cross, is the way Laius wants his son's feet pinned. Okay, so imagine you're the shepherd, King Lias tells you to do it, what would you do? Well, you'd probably do exactly what the shepherd did. You'd say, okay, I'll do it, but you don't actually do it. Um, so the shepherd takes um, the baby away and gives him over to another kingdom, a kingdom of Corinth, where the king of Corinth doesn't have a son, so this baby will be raised by the king of Corinth. The king of Corinth gives the baby the name Oedipus or swollen foot as a result of his ankles, which have had a pin put through them. So it's like a permanent scar that you're not just going to you know, forget about. It's not going to go away with age. So they name him swollen foot as a result of his injury. Um, just in case you're wondering, um, this story comes around about 450 years before the story of Jesus. Um, so 20 years pass. Doo -doo 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 -doo, 20 years in the future. Okay. Um, no, screwed that up. Oedipus has raised a happy child. He's very happy. Everything's cool. Uh, until one day, one of his friends gets drunk and tells him, man, like, you're, man, you're, you're totally adopted, man. Totally adopted. Um, Oedipus, understandably, is upset and goes to the Oracle of Delphi to find out the truth. Um, as you've seen for about two seconds, because it's sitting there. Uh, the oracle refuses to answer the question, but instead tells him, now this is his prophecy, that he is destined to kill his father and marry his mother. Well, that's not a very, you know, that's not a very good prophecy to have. Um, but Oedipus still doesn't know who his father is, but he decides that he's going to leave Corinth. Um, why? Because he still thinks the king of Corinth is actually his father. Um, and so he doesn't want to kill his father. The best way not to kill your dad is to not be around your dad. So he leaves. Um, randomly, he decides to go to Thebes, where he actually was born, but doesn't know that. Um, so on his way to Thebes, he almost gets ran over by people on a chariot. They're driving a chariot in a hurry. They don't really see uh, Oedipus walking, and they kind of almost hit him. He kind of gets really pissed off because he's already in a bad mood. And he kills all of them, except for one little um, like servant who runs away. He kills them all, says, screw it, and he keeps walking to Thebes. Okay? Remember that. So there's just a, a picture of, not really a picture, a sculpture of Oedipus um, pulling the people off the chariot and killing them since they almost ran him over. So he arrives at Thebes, and he finds out there's a, like a sphinx, like just like the one in Egypt, um, but a real one, not a sculpture, ravaging the city and eating the locals. Anybody that wants to go to Thebes, the Sphinx just eats. Um, 
So, previously, King Laius had left the city to go ask an oracle how to get rid of the Sphinx. So King Laius isn't there anymore, he just left. Uh, in the meantime, the king's advisor says, he's so fed up with the Sphinx, he says that anybody who can get rid of this Sphinx can have the hand of Queen Jocasta. Even though King Laius isn't dead, he's just left for a little bit, the king's advisor still says, I don't care, whoever wants, who can ever get rid of this Sphinx can marry Queen Jocasta and be king. Okay? So that's the promise. Oedipus arrives and the Sphinx gives him a riddle. If she solves the riddle, he lives. If he fails, he gets eaten. So there's a picture of Oedipus and the little Sphinx. The Sphinx kind of looks kind of cute, but whatever. So the riddle is, now you guys have like a, you have 10 seconds to figure this out. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at midday or the afternoon, and three in the evening? Okay, I'll give you 15 seconds. Do 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 Anybody? Answers? Answers? No? Going once, going twice, going three times. So the Oedipus says, a man. In the morning of his life, we are babies. We crawl on four legs. In our midlife, um, so the midday, we walk on two. And in the night of our life, or the end of our life, we walk on three legs with a cane. So that's the solution to the riddle. Oedipus figures this out. The Sphinx is shocked, says, oh my god, I can't believe you figured out my riddle. Jumps to her death, commits suicide. As promised, Oedipus marries uh, the Queen Jocasta and becomes the king of Thebes. They have four kids together. So as you know, who is Oedipus's mommy? Queen Jocasta. Who is now Oedipus's wife? Queen Jocasta. Who has Oedipus had four kids with? Queen Jocasta. So he's had four kids with his mother and has no idea. Neither of them know. Queen Jocasta thinks that her son is dead, and Oedipus thinks that the king of Corinth is still his father. So, all of a sudden a plague sp spreads all over the city. Um, sacrifices are made to all the gods. Remember that usually when something bad happens, it's because people have stopped worshipping the gods. So they sacrifice and worship the gods, but still nothing changes. Um, so they go to the oracle, and the oracle tells them that the cause of the plague is because you've let the murderer of the previous King Laius live amongst them. So whoever murdered King Laius, you just let them live in your city, and you haven't done anything about it. Okay? Okay. King Laius was last seen leaving Thebes on a chariot to go seek help to get rid of the Sphinx when he was murdered on the way. I hope you're putting the pieces together now. Okay? Oedipus still doesn't know. A seer says, Oedipus, like, I don't want to tell you this news, but if you really want to know, I'll tell you. So a seer is like a prophet or kind of... They can kind of see the future and they, they're very wise. They know certain things. So the seer tells Oedipus that, Oedipus, it was you who killed the king. Oedipus says, this is BS, you're a liar, get out of my city, how dare you say that I killed the previous king, I never even met the guy. Um, so news arrives from Corinth, that the king of Corinth has died. Oedipus is sad, but he's also happy, like, yes, I didn't kill my dad, so this prophecy of killing my father and marrying his mother has not come true. He thinks, no, I'm fine. The prophecy didn't come true. I'm married to a beautiful Queen Jocasta. My real father, King of Corinth, is dead, and I didn't kill him. So this prophecy must have been fake. But the messenger who Oedipus is telling this, so Oedipus is saying this out loud, yes, the prophecy is not true. I didn't kill my father. The messenger says, uh, Oedipus, King of Corinth was not your real father. I was the messenger who took you from a shepherd a long time ago. Sorry I never told you, but yeah, the king of Corinth is not your father. Oedipus is shocked, and he demands that the shepherd uh, be brought to him. So this shepherd comes and says, yeah, King Laius gave his son to me, told me to pierce his ankles together and leave him to die. But I couldn't do it, but if he lives, 
then he will surely still have the car scar on his ankles. Well, Oedipus looks down at his ankles and sees that there's a nasty scar right through both of his ankles and realizes that he is, in fact, the son of King Laius. Okay, so Oedipus knows, oh my God, I'm the, the son of King Laius. Then the lone survivor of King Laius' entourage, who had been attacked on the way to the oracle, comes forward and gives details on how one man had slayed the king and his company on his chariot and says, yes, that one man was Oedipus. So now Oedipus says, oh, you mean those random people who almost ran me over on the way here? That was the king? Yes, it was the king, and Oedipus killed him, and therefore killed his father. Oedipus stands in horror, realizing that he, as predicted by the prophecy, has in fact married his mother, had four kids with her, and killed his real father. Um, equally as devastated, Queen Jocasta, who realized that she's just slept with her son and had four kids, is so devastated that she goes into her bedchamber and hangs herself from the roof. Oedipus goes to the bedchamber, sees his mom and wife hanging there, and is so horrified he takes two pins off her dress, sticks them in his eyeballs, and plucks out his own eyes. Um, the Oedipus goes on to do a couple more things, but he pretty much goes and lives his life as a beggar um, for the rest of his life. So one of the things on your sheet is, why do, what was the tragedy in this story? Same thing with the other people who are doing the Argonautica are looking at. It's a very tragic life for these heroes, okay? So like a Shakespearean tragedy, you have the Greek tragedies. And that's how this one ends, with uh, Oedipus being an eyeless, homeless beggar, okay? If you guys have time, Google Oedipus Complex. It's a major psychology thing, and the Oedipus Complex is named after this story, okay?